Hi, I'm Christina and this is going to be my reading statistics for 2021 and they're my favourite books of the year so far. So I'm planning to read 52 books this year and I've read a total of 13 so I'm on track to meet that target. When I was looking back at my reading for 2020, my biggest genre was thrillers and I knew that would be the case. I predominantly read thrillers but I found out that they're not actually my favourite genre. My favourite genre is contemporary. I was looking back at all of the books I've read and a lot of my favourites were contemporary. So I made it a goal for this year to read more contemporary books and also to read more science fiction because there was a couple of those in my top like five, ten, two. So they're two genres that I really wanted to focus on reading more of this year and I've definitely achieved that goal because now contemporary books are my most most read genre. So I have read 40% contemporary, 20% science fiction, 20% thriller, 10% fantasy and 10% mystery. So that is a massive change. Before my reading was predominantly thrillers and now I'm only reading like 20% thrillers so I'm really pleased with that. I'm really pleased with the way my like reading has shifted genre um, and I'm definitely reading a lot of contemporaries that I really like. In fact, out of the three books I've picked as my favourite of 2021 so far, two of them have been contemporary. So yeah, I'm really chuffed with that. So in terms of ratings, I've had a really strong reading year so far. Almost 50% of the books I've read, I've rated three star, which is a solid rating for me. It means I've enjoyed the book. And then 30% of my books, I've rated five star, which is absolutely great. And then 15% I've rated four star, which means 95% of the books I've read, I've rated three stars or higher, which is absolutely amazing. I've only had one two star read I haven't had any one star reads but I have DNF'd a lot more books than last year and that was one of my goals for this year too if I'm not enjoying a book if I'm not connecting with the characters if I'm finding it boring I'm just going to put it down DNF it and move on because there's so many great books out there that I want to read and I just don't have the time to waste time reading a book then I'm not enjoying. Life's too short. So I'm really, really pleased with that. I'm really pleased that I, I'm now actively DNFing books a lot more. And I'm really, really chuffed. And to know that 95% of my reading is three star, four star, five star is just absolutely wonderful. And I just hope I can keep that up during the whole year because that would be brilliant. It would mean I've read some absolutely wonderful books. So that's the plan. So in terms of audience, 85% of the books I've read have been adult books and 15% have been young adult books. And I was expecting that. I'm definitely reading a lot more adult books. I'm finding myself less drawn towards young adult books the older I'm getting. So I'm pleased with that split. It's nice that I'm still kind of reading a little bit of YA, but the vast majority of my reading is adult and that's exactly what I expected. And then in terms of the author, I have a 50-50 split for male and female authors, which is actually really nice and balanced. So I'm pleased about that one. And then in terms of year of publication, every single book I've read has been published within the last seven years. So I'm definitely reading newer releases, which I'm also pleased about. In fact, 50% of my reading are books that were published in 2018. And then 25% of my reading is books that were published in 2020. So definitely reading within the last kind of three years of publication. So yeah, I'm pleased with that. I'm pleased that I'm mainly reading more recent releases, because that's really where I want to like focus my time. I want to focus on the newer books that I've had my eye on for some time. And yeah, I haven't read anything that's been published in 2021 so far. So that'll be nice to do. But I'm mainly reading a little bit of backlist, you know, the last few years. So I'm pleased about that one. So in terms of nationality of the authors, 
40% of the books I've read are by British authors and then 30% are by American authors and that is something that I, I'm actually expecting. I am expecting to read mainly British authors as I am British, they're the most accessible books to me especially when I go to my library but I am definitely trying to make an actual effort to read more diversely in terms of nationality of authors and I'm actually really pleased with my kind of inclusion of diversity so far because I've read books by Australian authors, by Japanese authors, by Vietnamese authors, Swedish and Nigerian. So I'm really, really chuffed that I'm kind of trying to read more diversely and I think that's been a really good kind of improvement for me. It is something that I am kind of working actively on to try and read more translated fiction too. So I've read two translated books, one that was translated from Swedish and one that was translated from Japanese. So yeah, I'm really chuffed with that. It's definitely something that's a work in progress. I would love to read a book by an author at every country in the world. <laughs> That's not like a goal for this year. That was like a bigger goal. I'd love to have been able to say, yes, I've read a book from an author in every country in the world, but I, that's gonna be a long-term goal. So now onto the best bit, my favourite books of 2021 so far. I've narrowed it down to three books and the reason I've chosen these three is because they've all left a lasting impression on me. I can see myself thinking about these stories in the coming months and the coming years. I've given them all five stars. I think they're written absolutely beautifully and I've had a very kind of emotional connection to these characters too. So I actually have book reviews and a reading vlog for all three of these books. So I'll link those down below in case you'd like to hear my more detailed thoughts on why I love them so much and I'll mention them just briefly here. So it is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig which is a fantasy book and then I have two contemporary books, one of which is Ask Again Yes by Mary Beth Keane and the other is called Three Things About Elsie by Joanna Cannon and I'll leave a picture of that one here so you can see what it looks like. So those are my favourite books of 2021 so far and all of my reading statistics for the year so far too. Please do let me know what has been your favourite book of 2021. I'd love to chat to you about your favourite books down in the comments. So thank you so much for watching. Please do like the video if you liked it and please do subscribe if you'd like to see more of me talking about books. I'll see you in my next one. Bye!